strange is probably the only term to explain what happened earlier today. The Cash Pharmacy Junction on Residency Road had a strange liquid oozing from the ground for the second consecutive day today. Don't believe us? Take a look. From the security guard of LIC office on Residency Road to the employees and now even passers-by, everyone has been curious and some even concerned about the mysterious diesel-like substance seeping out of the earth onto the road. Yesterday, there was a huge crowd that gathered here with the fire tender ready to jump into action. But surprisingly, the liquid stopped oozing out after a while. But it was today that left many surprised. The BBMP labourers were here to dig up the problem and this is what they found. Drainage pipe running just a foot below the ground was found to be the source of this leakage. While well, many initially thought it was kerosene oozing out of the ground, here is another view on the matter. Now what exactly is this? Is this kerosene? Is this diesel? Is this petrol? Now to talk about this, we have Mr. Bhushan Narang, the president of the, the chairman of the Petroleum Dealers Association. Mr. Bhushan Narang has uh, collected a small sample. This is uh, less than uh, this is less than 20 ml that he has collected. And Mr. Narang uh, has has uh, what explanation is this? What could it be, Mr. Narang? It is smelling predominantly of diesel, and it is uh, obviously a diesel tank. A pipeline which was there earlier, which is, has residual diesel, which is leaking out over a period of years. The diesel typically, after a long number of months or years in a tank container, when it leaks out, this is how it smells. Okay. Also, could it be that one of these overhead facilities where the you have the connectors, the, the transmitting towers for the mobiles, where a lot of diesel is stored, could it be leaking through some of these pipes? Because, uh, you know, diesel, uh, th th these are utilities that we have here. Could it be leaking with the sewage pipes? Not likely. It's not at all uh, something that's fresh. It's something which is very stale. So it is uh, harmless. It's very stale and it's got that pungent smell of diesel typically. And it's stored in a, even a vehicle tank for a long number of years. It is how it smells. But diesel, unlike petrol, is not a flammable liquid, highly flammable like petrol. So you can't just throw a match and it can't ignite. So, Ms. Bhushan, is there a danger for the people considering such huge amounts are leaking? Not unless somebody brings in a fire and puts it on it. There's no danger. By itself, there's no danger. Suppose someone throws a cigarette butt. No, nothing will happen. It will get extinguished. Okay, so, so diesel... Diesel is not highly flammable. No, like no, petrol. it's not, not, not at all flammable like petrol. This is how oh, it's soaked in the earth, so it will go away, it'll go into the earth very soon. See how, as it is not collecting very much. Okay. So to collect a sample will be a tough task. Okay. So it's not a very big leak, nor is it a very huge quantity. So nothing to get scared of. Well, it has been stated that the oozing liquid is no reason to worry because if it really is diesel as suspected, the quantity needs to be much higher and not heavily contaminated with soil to catch fire. Some were seen collecting the liquid in little bottles to have it tested. Source of the drainage pipe from which the liquid is oozing has been traced to Ritz-Carlton Hotel nearby. Some have raised questions on why would a pipe leading to a hotel carry such huge amounts of diesel-like substance. Though the pipe was recently fixed, the strange phenomenon has caught a lot of attention and some have even expressed their concerns. Meanwhile, Bhushan Narayan, the president of Bangalore Petroleum Dealers Association, has volunteered to have it tested to confirm if it is diesel or some other hydrocarbon substance. Bansi Kalapa for News 9. The world-renowned chef Vikas Khanna was in Bengaluru to spread more information on his book Hymns from the Soil, a book that reveals all his cooking secrets, making it a bible for vegetarians. My colleague Nabila exclusively caught up with the man who's made the country proud by presenting the Indian culinary experience to the world. Listen in. When it comes to food and cooking, there are chefs and then there are magicians. This man here is definitely one of that. Vikas Khanna, he enters the kitchen and cooking is not cooking anymore. It's my pleasure to have him right here with me. Vikas, thank you so much for speaking to us. Pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> because you're not even married, so don't do that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to shake hands, okay? Thank you very much. Of course you're allowed. I think uh, chefs have uh, created a new space in the food world in India today. It's such a massive revolution. You know? I just feel more than just being a fashionable or doing something. Today, food has become so iconic of our culture. And I think it's fantastic space because 
now when I'm writing new projects and new books, I can use food to explain the culture. How, how do you see cooking evolved in India over the past decade, the evolution of food in India? I think internet, when you look at all the aspects which are helping evolve the cooking world of India, it's internet, it is so much about television shows, it's so much of new chefs who are coming to India. Now when I meet any Michelin star chef in America or Europe, their ultimate dream is, are we gonna have a restaurant in India? It's like, you know, now India has become a food destination, you know, and which is fantastic. 10 years ago, those chefs did not know the opportunities which exist in India right now. But this time, India is on its prime. You have taken Indian culinary experience internationally and made it so well renowned. Tell us, give a, take us to a glimpse of your journey. Um, Amritsar, 17 years, Lawrence Garden, Kitty Party House, 20 rupees per plate for Auntie G's, eating <laughs> unlimited baturas and cholas, <laughs> drinking thumbs ups and vanilla ice creams and gulab jamuns, paneer pakoras. Went to did my hotel management for Manipal. Things started refining, I started learning more. And then went back to my catering and uh, was there till 2000 and then finally smitten by performing at the world stage. Went to New York City in December 2000. And then again started from the very scratch and figured out that if you believe in something, no struggle is enough. You, can, you have to give everything away for it. Uh, one of the three Michelin starred chefs in India, uh, who really taught you cooking besides all your uh, you know, institutions? Uh, my grandmother always knew that I was born to cook. She's not... She's gone, so she's not seen my restaurant, but I hope she's... Uh, she was... Uh, she never visited my restaurants. I hope she's looking at me and saying, okay, she's proud of her little son, whom she taught how to roll breads. Oh my God, I, I, are you, you made her proud, you made the country proud. You're, you're now the toast of New York. But I think uh, she taught me the real cooking. Nobody else could teach me. It's like... Nobody can teach you the power of music. People can teach you notes. She taught me the power of food. The power of food. Now, now, now that we have you here with your apron and all of that, I want you to give a quick recipe to our Bangalore audience. Anything, oh anything, the most simple. Simple recipe, what we're doing is right now, we're boiling green mangoes. Like, you know, you make man green mangoes with rice, the way you do in Ogadi and all those things. So what we're doing is that we're going to boil green mangoes with a little bit of shea salt and pepper, and then we're going to puree them and then we're going to add some honey to it and that's a fun, fantastic drink. The other drink which we are serving right now is that we have kiwis, a little bit of water, mint, honey and a little bit of black salt. Blend it well in a blender and you have an amazing kiwi smoothie. Great for summers. Wow. Okay, finally, do you, how important do you think is experimenting inside a kitchen? Oh, it's very important right now because uh, people have eaten dal and chicken makhani and paneer makhani Evolution is the key to survival. If you're not evolving, if you're not bringing something new on the table every time, you might lose on the interest on your cooking. So innovation is the key. Innovation is the key. A few of the chefs that you can name will make it really big, as big as Vikas Khanna. Oh, there are so many of them. Oh God, so many. I don't know. Just I'm big, but I think uh, they are fantastic. There's a whole line of. Mandar Javle, who's doing fantastic work in, in uh, Toronto. We have a chef who's fantastic in uh, Canada, uh, Vikram Vij. We have, we have such a big line of chefs who are doing so fantastic. I'm just a little bit. No way. I'm telling you. Oh, finally, your Bangalore connection. Bangalore has been my love line. I know one of my friends, he used to be um, uh, families of Mr. Virappa Moili. So I used to come to Bangalore very often. From, two, from 1990 to 1994. Vikas, like I can't help, uh, one, of the, one of your fans said, you look good and cook good. Now, to a man, the way to the heart is through his stomach. How are you going to woo your women? Woman, <laughs> Women, woman. It doesn't work like this because my, none of my relationships work because I work so much. <laughs> so so I've, I've left that hope on moon now. <laughs> but I just travel too much, I work too much and I'm always creating something always new and more powerful. So it takes a lot of energy from me. I'm sure you'll find someone Thank along you. the way. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Vikas. Well, that was uh, the pride of India and the toast of New York, Vikas Khanna with his book. Uh, all the best to him with that. With camera person Samir, this is Nabila for News 9.